profile, it reads fairly good. So if Jiren's gonna make a wing, I think this is the closest one that will match OEM look with the same shape cutting off on the same design. The car is also lowered it. So me and Bob decided to use the ZR1 wing for the C8. The main reason is because the ZR1 wing for the C7 is very OEM and looks great. So if there is any OEM or future GN factory wing, it's gonna look fairly close to this. Might even be better. So this will be a good starting point. And also this wing is now fairly available online, eBay, places very cheap. So I decided um, I need to get this thing to scale so we can model this wing onto the C8. At this moment, this is what I did. I dropped this model in I found online. Not to scale, not measured, um, just a shape kind of looked like it. And we went ahead and measured the actual ZR1 wing we got online. And this is the, this, um, the dimension, the length of the wing. Scaled it to place and we slap on the, the ends plates right here because the ones online, those two pieces are three and taped onto the wing. So we were able to measure the distance from this point to from these two points. Okay. Next, and we saw this uh, we, after we glued them back together in the computer, we cut in half. And now the next job is to measure how accurate or have to make our own bracket. And it doesn't look like, from further examination, it doesn't look like this bracket is related to what we got from the other manufacturer, which is a replica wing. This might be fairly close to the actual ZR1 and same as the lake, but may not be exactly the same as the aftermarket one because we do have the actual ZR1 in our garage able to measure. And the actual ZR1 is actually slightly in this piece. So we're gonna walk you through it. So we, we do have the wing in half and of course with that taking off. And the next piece after we take this off, just taking apart the, the model. And that is basically what the model can to scale. I went ahead and um, if you see my other video, I stenciled it and get the actual dimension of the aftermarket. And this is the aftermarket, not the OEM, the aftermarket piece. This is the top view of the bracket, the side view, the holes, the center point, the end point, the other end point. So this is this end point, this is this end point. Okay, and then we got top plate and we got the curvature, very closely stenciled it out and the holes. The next is to trace all the elements. I believe in this, I did trace, yeah, I traced it and went ahead and made this particular piece right here. Just fairly simple extrusion and we measured it with the actual piece. Turn around and we made the top piece, the top holes for the drill. Those are the top holes. One, two, three. Three holes for the aftermarket ZR1 wing. We punched them through from the screws and then we end up got the actual piece of the bracket that holds the aftermarket. Again, this is the aftermarket piece. In order to have the actual fitting goes correctly, this is important for us to now to make this bracket, this aftermarket bracket. After we make it, we put it on, set in location, drop in into the ZR1 wing, right over here. And as we can tell, the holes for the previous ZR1 wing is not exactly aligned, and the size is slightly different. So, and because this is an aftermarket piece, and we did stretch, you see all the lines, we have to stretch this across to fit fairly well. So now we have the aftermarket bracket onto the wing and then we can make our own stance. So first thing first, <clears throat> first thing first, we need to get a CA model to scale. So I downloaded this particular CA model after 10 or 15 other models. This one looks fairly good. Um, it's a very cruel model, but the scale and the detail overall looks much better than I expected from the other model. On top of that, this one does have all the engine department set up because we're going to work on the trunk. As further examination after we put into transparent mode, this CA might be a leak from the GN design team because it has all the fasteners, every single piece that CA would need as a shell, even the interior. It even include the trunk, all the liner in the trunk, and the engine mounting, uh, the exhaust system. So this particular model, um, it's great for us to use as a starting point. So we download a model of C8 online. Um, not to scale or anything, not sure exactly, but fairly good detail of the C8 someone made. Um, the main thing we really want to do is to look at this particular wing. And you can tell the C8 is slotted into the trunk. And with a support, there's a, there's a support point right here if you look at the GM video. The C8, this wing can go up and down about 12 inches or 14 inches. Depends on the mounting point inside the, the bumper. GR1 C8 race car. So we're going to take this wing 
into the CA model and take a look how it looks. And I will see, as we look in deeper into this model, flipping open the trunk, we do realize there is a cavity inside the trunk right here. If I turn this into a solid, you will see there is a cavity. I believe this cavity in the trunk, and it's somewhat curved, um, it's definitely, let me turn on this wireframe, you can tell it's curved all the way in the middle and down, back down into on both ends. It's definitely something they did uh, meant to put the roof back into the trunk, and that's where they carve out the cavity. And that would be an important element for us to look when we do mount the wing onto the trunk on top. And because the top of the trunk is also curved, how are we going to work with both curvature on the top and the bottom of the trunk? And able to CMC and fasten something that allow us to make a perfect fitment because the bolt is going to be straight. But if the straight bolt goes up and somehow all the curvature causing either the mounting inside or the outside to bend, especially bending the trunk, that's what we don't want. We don't want to crack the trunk or the paint. We'll take a look at that next. So the next, what we did is we took the red Corvette just to prove it is the original red one, we brought the C8R wing back into this uh, model. And we'll take a look how this model, uh, this wing, fit on this factory C8 after being adjusted to actual scale with the actual scale of the C8R wing. Took a while to make both to scale, but this is what it looks like. And you can tell I pushed the wing slightly back a little bit um, it was the request of Bob, this was a working model. He would like to have the wing basically at this position compared to the C-A-R wing. Just slightly back a little bit, I believe it's, um, can't remember the reason why it was. Just back a little bit, maybe by an inch or two inches. Um, maybe the way it looks, or the trunk. I think he wanted the, nah, not, I don't remember exactly, but that's the position he want. He wanted. So, that's what we were designed to. Let's go ahead and take a look next file. Okay, as you can see in this file, I turned the Corvette into white. The red is a little distracted. So we brought the CAR wing back in here. Obviously, we have this uh, new location by the client, um, Bob. So, this is where the location he wanted to be. And we'll look at the ZR1, C7ZR1 wing. That is the big difference between the C7ZR1 wing mounted to C8. The height and the width in comparison. Okay, this is the width in comparison to the C8. R compared to the ZR1 wing on the C7 that mount to the C8 and the height. So, we want to match the height and the width. Um, in this case, we can't really do too much about the width unless, until we make our own wing, which we will. Um, but for this prototype, um, we will just go ahead and use this aftermarket piece. And first thing first, we will have to raise up this particular wing to this height. Let's take a look at the next file. In this file, you will see a line of C8. They're not for sale, they're just models. So, back to the previous file, this is where we, we had the box wing. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to raise it up. You can tell from this particular, let me get back to it. From this particular file, on this car right here, we raise the wing up in comparison to the previous phase. Raise the wing up to the same height as the C-A-R wing, the Z-R-1 wing to C-R wing. We turn on the Z-R-1 wing to both sides, take a look, see what it looks like. It's pretty good, it's curvature, whole thing, looks nice. And we move on to the plate. We have to make a plate inside the trunk. So I went ahead and just pulled out the actual trunk. This is the actual trunk curvature. The curvature of the trunk, that little location we were, ta we were talking about earlier, let me do x-ray mode. That component right here, that, there's a line right here, um, a piece I sunk into the CA. I believe GM made that particularly to put their roof back in there, just tuck their roof back in there. So I took the curvature out, cut the lines out, and made an actual platform, flat platform, we can cut out with CMC. And the difference between the height, as you can tell, the lowest point is here, of that particular compartment, the top of the bottom of the trunk, but the top of the the, the compartment. So we're gonna have to make that CMC out of this, make a plate to make that height differences, and stick this back in, allow us to have a flat platform to mount all the bolts back in there. So this is what I came up with in the end. So half this piece was support the, the height differences is basically a tricycle system. If it, if after we install it, it still moves around a little bit, we can add a little more support on these two ends to give even more agility. But at the moment, I believe a tricycle will do fairly well. I believe this is a quarter inch plate. And single plate is going to be flat on the bottom of the trunk. We can insert into it. And after that, we have that piece centered, ready to drop back in. And next is to design a bracket. 
and the bracket I've been looking at as a designer for many buildings as architect. Um, as a designer myself, I, if someone's going to design my house, the house I redesigned it, or a building I redesigned to do renovation, I would like them to take a look at the existing design language. And after further examination, CA has a consistent design language behind it, the boomerang. There's a boomerang here, there's a boomerang on the tail, on the, um, the, the side mirror, there's a boomerang right here, and there's a boomerang effect right here. Also, even the headlight is a boomerang. As a designer, it's fairly easy for me to spot another designer's original intent. They call it boomerang, I would say it's more of a um, pen air, like airline, even a jet feel. Um, feel, not jet feel, but jet alike. Um, maybe like F-15, Strike Eagle, um, kind of feel of a fighter jet. Look, there's a boomerang right here. So they took the same language. I, I would like to incorporate the same language back into the car instead make it look like, even if it's gonna be an aftermarket, but you would have to respect the original design. If GM's going to do a wing, this might be one of the options and this is the most likely option they would do. So I took the particular boomerang off here, the shape off here, stuck it back in here, exact same model. You can tell that is the boomerang from, that, uh, from one of the sides. I flipped it around, okay? There is a shape to it because that's from the scoop. And we're looking at the shape. I really like the shape. Um, at least it goes with the original design. The next thing is how to make this shape to actually work with the wing. And as you guys can tell, this is actually a fairly cool shape. If we can curve it like this, uh, it will have to make out a carbon fiber piece. If it does look like this. But we will have to CMC out this other piece of aluminum. T661 aluminum. So let's look at the next file, how we get to this, get to a better um, workable design for this wing. But the overall shape, I would say GM would approve and the original respect the original design of the car will look very OEM and not some aftermarket piece or we can just straight copy C7R wing that's another idea okay in this file you can tell I went ahead and made the trunk transparent so we can see the whole assembly how we're able to do this so the previous issue is how are we going to you can tell I already put a bracket back in where that hole is it fits perfectly it's how are we going to set this thing correctly on the trunk as you can tell, there is a slope to the existing trunk. Okay, so the bracket has to be somewhat sloped. And this is the slope. And that distance between this gray line to this line, that is the thickness of the material for the trunk. And we'll back into it, and that's where the bracket is going to sit. So the first bolt, we gotta have the bracket. The both bracket set onto this mount, inside mount, flat. So anyone can install this in the future if we do decide to sell this. It makes it fairly easy to pop this in and make the drill, the whole drill, easy and simple. And of course, we still got this boomerang shape I stole off the side of the C8 right here and squashed it. So I went ahead and took a flat surface, project the lines all the way down perfectly onto a piece of paper. This is the line we got. And after we got that line, I flipped that thing 90 degrees back into where the wing is, the ZR1 wing with the bracket. And the next phase is to how we're going to make this shape work with the bolts. So the original projected shape, I went ahead and started tracing it making this, trying to make this thing a fairly decent shape out of them. These two lines are the line of the trunk, so we have to adhere with the line, the bottom of the line and the top of the line, where the bolt is going to be. And it took a while, about an hour or so, playing with the lines, and we finally got the shape I want. It's still somewhat resembling a boomerang shape, but the line gets refined um, by different degrees, different angles, and slowly get to a point I feel like Aesthetically, it looks really good and has still have the boomerang shape and it doesn't look odd. Also have all the mounting point we need. So that is the profile we will be needing for the machine cut, either the laser or water jet cut. And of course, we got to extrude this. So I went ahead and extrude this to the shape we want. So in this particular exercise, what we really want to do is not to have any bolt show. So the bolt will have to go inside the bracket, underneath it, within the bracket, not outside, have a mounting point. And in this, you can see where we put double side and adjust the wing width to the zero degree angle at the natural downforce, not a truck tilt, and go ahead and make the bracket. And this is the bracket, okay? The design of the bracket has to come to, we will have to punch a 5 8 hole into it and with the bolt. Those color are the bolts that goes into it, okay? And that's the length of the bolt. We have to set a spacer, allow this thing to sit flush. Instead use the actual block we were using before, I decided to use a sleeve so you can drop this in, have the wings set in to give the correct angle of the of the of the placement on both ends. You drill the hole out and comes down to keep going. On the top, 
what we're going to do is to have the placement of the hole where the mounting bracket is and somewhat of adjustment. I went ahead and designed a few different angles bracket. So we could totally abandon. At this point, Bob have a choice. He can use the adjustment bracket I'm going to make or he can just go ahead and make a solid piece, use the existing aftermarket bracket and put it on because he is in such a hurry. But for future, if I do want to make this into a production, a retail production, I decide to make few angles so people able to adjust this wing angle by switching out simply the last bracket right here. So they have a, I would say there's a 15 degree adjustment, 10 degree adjustment, 5 degree adjustment. And you adjust to the maximum height if you need it. And of course we have a sleeve. We will have to pop the sleeve, um, this piece back into the, any wing basically, into here and thread. So this thing goes, this particular uh, female end, once you pop the screw in, it will squash almost like a rivet. We call it rivet nut. This rivet nut will go in and squash into the existing wing, allow us to basically mount to any wing. It doesn't have to be this wing, it can be an APR wing, it can be almost any wing in the market, and the mounting point will sit correctly. And basically back to where we had it, we all mounted the entire assembly back into the car for future CMC, and that will be that will basically be the design of this new wing. And this wing uh, here, after we paint it black, black, this is what it looks like with the mounting point. We cut a slot in the middle, slide those in, fairly similar to my previous wing design for my C7. And let me see. So this is what I want to show. This wing had two options. Because the mounting point, you can also mount, reverse mount the mounting point and allow you to have a double wing, which I don't think many people will do, or a reverse wing. I, I believe a lot of people would like a reverse wing. A reverse wing is a lot like what Kona Exact, a lot of supercar have. So this will, you'll, you'll be able to mount upside down with the same mounting point, but instead of mount the bottom, you'll mount the top. Of course, it doesn't have to be this particular aftermarket wing, it can be any wing, but with this bracket system, you can mount basically any wing up on top or on, on the bottom and adjust its angle. That's on the top. So let me know on the in the comments which one do you like. Do you like the on the top look, on the top look, or on the or in the bottom look? I personally like this look a lot better. Look a lot more like a supercar. It's really cool. I guess this is a good time as I need to explain the project. Bob came to me after he saw I'm designing four different versions of my wing using water jet and laser. And um, he really wanted to do his uh, C8. So around September, um, we talked about it and we came to a conclusion we need to do this in the computer just the same way as I did for my C7. And uh, as you can see, I cut out the cardboards just the way I did the C7 as a markup. He later took the cardboard to the machine shop, uh, saved some money instead of using water jet, have the machinist cut out these two shapes. And it actually kind of worked, but end up it's slightly different product than the one I designed it. There's a hole in the middle, he tried to save some weight. Personally, I did it in the computer, I did cut out a hole but does not look as good, in my personal opinion, as a solid piece that really stands out, reads as the boomerang, or the way GM has it. Um, but you will see the hole they cut out. Also, he decided to win with his um, aftermarket bracket he got for the ZR1 wing, because he won the wing to mount it now. And he also made a attempt to attach the wing himself inside the trunk and you will see in the video. So we just did Bob's wing. This is the one from the computer. The mechanic decided to cut this piece out. But anyways, that's what it looks like. And we're reflecting the same shape of that, just vice versa. Yeah. Pretty good. Bob's wing. Profile, it reads fairly good. So if GM's gonna make a wing, I think this is the closest one that will match OEM look with the same shape cutting off on the same design. The car is also lowered it this way. Looks really good. And we mount straight into it with a back plate inside the trunk and a rubber gasket.